Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode from the Hermitcraft server. In today's episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be hanging out with Scar and Joe. We were just, just basically hanging out and talking and just randomly doing stuff. So uh, we're going to jump into some footage. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a little bit of a different episode, but uh, I think you guys will have fun. I think it'll be, <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm running through the nether on the Hermitcraft server, I'm in a huge hurry, you know why? Because I'm gonna hang out with my friends Good Times with Scar and Wells Knight. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna say? I don't know exactly what we're gonna say, but I do know the general subject is Star Trek. Set your phasers to fun! Oof, that pun. That pun right there. Set your phasers to pun! <laughs> oh, oh man. Great. That's, ow, I, I can't right. even... It was a brilliant pun. Don't, it was good, good pun. Don't get me wrong, but oh, the pain. Great pun. Important <laughs> pun. Uh, I strive to make sure all my puns are important and that they stand on their own. You know, because these videos aren't just for us or our children. These will endure. And when people look back on this era and they say, uh, computer, give me an episode of Joe Hills' show representative of people talking about Star Trek in the 21st century, then, you know, I want this to be the episode that comes up. With that pun. With that, that pun. pun. <laughs> Very important, that pun's in, in, in there. Um, do you guys ever play Betrayal at the House on the Hill? I really don't play board games, to be honest. I just don't have... Have you ever played like... board games with me? I'd buy them. Yeah. I'd save up, and I'd buy them, and then nobody would be interested in playing with them. me, and then I'd think, okay, it's the next board game. I'll just buy this one. I'll save up for, like, six months. I'm going to get Risk, and this is the game. This is the game that everybody's going to play with me, and... I get it, and it's like, no, still nobody's interested. Well, you know, you know what it is, Scar? It's because Story you're a very life. intimidating guy. <laughs> like, that's really what it comes down to. You know, people are people are scared of you because you're just, you're you're so You know, they hear Scar, they think Scarface, yep. they think you're in the mob. Exactly. They're like, whoa, you you're know, so this guy's connected. I don't want to have a bad roll of the dice and end up with a horse's head in my bed or a, <laughs> a metal boot or something. You swimming know, whatever the, the game markers are in uh, Monopoly these days. You know, swimming Probably with a the cell fishes. phone or yep. some headphones or earbuds or whatever. <laughs> you know, Scar. I just, yep. it's most yep. intimidating guy on Hermitcraft. <laughs> Without a doubt. I actually have a Disneyland version of that game. It's amazing. A little castle pops up when you open the board. I have a Star Wars version of that game. I lost my Star Wars board at a swim meet once. You know what I don't have is a Star Trek version of that game. Ooh. Ooh. Back to the topic. Will's Knight with you the see subtlety. See that transition right there? Bam. I love Man, it. I love it's it. like a transporter beam just picked us up and put us back on track. Wells, you said you and your wife watch Star Trek every year. What do you mean by that? Bi-annually. By so, so basically every other, every other year we go back okay. since the whole Star Trek uh, series, like all of the television shows are all on Netflix. Uh, we go back like every it's and it's not really like intentional, but it just kind of we get that that craving, you know, we're like, you know, what, we should go back and we should watch this again. So every two years or so we go back and we watch the entire Star Trek television show, every every show, every episode, the whole thing. So I where like do you it. start? Do you start chronologically with Kirk, or do you start? Or, sorry, do you start like um, telegenically with Kirk, or do you start chronologically with Enterprise? Chronologically with Enterprise. I got to say, one of my favorite things about Enterprise that really ties the whole series together is the fact that those flip communicators in the original series that look so silly. They use, like, flip phones, and they cradle them between their shoulders and their heads in Enterprise when they're working on stuff. Mm-hmm. Like oh, when Trip is working on something in engineering, he's got the phone between his shoulder and his head, or or the communicator between his shoulder and his head, mm -hmm. and he's just talking while he's working. And I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense now. I like the fact that there's a like Enterprise is not my favorite Star Trek, um, but I like the fact that there's a lot of stuff that really kind of ties into later. It it sets the stage for everything else that happens later on, in a lot of different ways. Like it explains. Uh, and it explains a lot of the discrepancies between the original series and the later, uh, you know, the later. Oh, like Star the Treks. Klingon genetics for exactly. their foreheads. Yep. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That was a cool little thing. That, and then like the whole Doctor Nunyan Soong and the the. Um, well, anytime that you can get Brent Spiner on the television screen, you're making good decisions. I like, would agree. 
Brett Spiner is great as as Data. He's great as Lore. Um, obviously, Data was a very constrained role for him. So him being able to play, uh, 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 dang it, what's Data's dad's name? You know, the roboticist. Noonien, Doctor Noonien Soon. Is it? Doctor Soon. Yep. And okay, because in... I thought Khan's name was Noonien Soon. No, it's no, that can't be right. So Khan was made by like Akon Soong or something like that. So basically okay. basically so Data's creator is a descendant of the guy who did all the genetic stuff that created oh, Khan and all right. the like yeah. Like the in fact in Enterprise, uh after that whole thing with all the the genetically engineered humans Oh no. I broke my did pick. Did you hit a Lenderman? I broke my good pick. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, no. Well, yeah, mine's getting super low. I'm glad you... We're, We're going to have to run to the sorry. Ender Farm together to get all our mending gear fixed. Rip. No, no, like it's broke, broke. It's gone, and now I broke it's my gone. Ender chest. Oh. I am so professional. Because <laughs> that was my Silk Touch pick. I have something for you, Scar. Which I Creeper? Should... No. He's, he's staring no. at us. No, he's staring no, at us, Wells. Is he? Where, oh, I see there? him. Oh, he's coming for you. Oh, he's coming down. Oh, he, oh, oh. <laughs> Wells, I had a whole thing. I was, I was gonna do a running jump. Were you gonna give it a haya? I was. I was gonna do the whole haya and everything. But this is, this is for you. It, it's a book. It's like story time. I will read it to you. Oh, I love story times. Dear, you know we have a Scar, place in the library for books. I would like to hire you using this coupon for a landscaping job. Could you turn the throne room in my dwarven base into a super awesome Scar Cave of Awesomeness? Thanks, me. There I you love go. story time for and you. landscaping. Ow, oh, and I broke the ender chest that I just bought because it's... Mm, grr. You didn't use your silk touch? I Well, I broke my silk touch. Did you know uh, the guy who played Vic Fontaine on Star Trek Deep Space Nine has an album of a bunch of the songs he performed on Star Trek Deep Space Nine? I had completely forgotten about the character of Dick Fontaine because we haven't Vic gotten... Dick Fontaine. Th yeah, that guy. I totally yeah. forgot about him until like just now because we haven't uh, we haven't gone back and watched... We haven't gotten to Deep Space Nine yet. Gotcha. We just finished Enterprise. So we've got a good... Well, let's see. So we just finished X Enterprise. we got to make it through the original series, which is relatively short. Yeah, and then, uh And then Next Gen, which is... The greatest of the Star Treks, if you ask me. Now, when you get oh, to yeah. the overlap between like Star uh, Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, do you start like watching the episodes? Nah, every other, I just no. keep it. I just keep it. Uh, keep it simple and watch all of the original series, and then gotcha. All so of you Deep don't Space see all Nine. the uh, all the Cardassian stuff side by side, right? Or whatever. Yeah. Because it's recent. Because by the time uh, you get to that, like it's recent enough in memory that. Because we just, you know, we'll have just watched Next Gen. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's recent enough that I remember it's it's going on. Do you, So what would you think of Voyager? I, I liked Voyager, really liked Voyager okay. Not as much as Next Gen, but Voyager was probably my second favorite. Yeah, I, I would say... I being lost. I would say cool it's concept. it's no Next Gen, but Voyager... No. I would say my, my order of precedence for Star Trek is Next Gen, followed by Deep Space Nine, followed by Voyager. Ah, uh, yeah. I should do another watch through of Deep Space Nine. That was good. I like when they um, when they got that that uh, concept ship. What was that called? The Defiance. The Defiance. The Defiance. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Even cool the show. runabouts were pretty. I, I liked the runabouts because they gave you an opportunity to like have the characters hanging out while they're traveling. Mm -hmm. Like a lot mm -hmm. of the runabout episodes, like oh hey, it's Odo and. Basically, Odo and anybody in a runabout was going to be a good episode. Yeah. Now, one series I have not watched enough of, or anything anything Kirk. You know, I've seen episodes here and there, but never a run through of the entire season. And I've actually never seen any of his movies, but I've seen every, all the other ones. You know, all John Luke Picard. Mm -hmm. You know, the flute and everything. A whole nine yards, but not not the uh not, not much of Kirk. That's something I need to do. I have to confess, the original series is the one that I always have trouble making it through. And it's not because of like the costumes and the special effects and the stuff like that. Like that the fact that those are obviously a little dated now really doesn't bother me. It's just the acting. Like some of the <laughs> acting in the original series is just so bad. Well, uh, not what could you mean by that? I exactly. 
point point made right there. <laughs> You when know? he's attacking that giant, like, um, he, what was he? He was like this kind of like green creature, and he had like some a gorn trunks on. Yeah, it's yeah. like, and he did the high yaw thing. He's like, oh yeah, right under the head. I know. Like, I can, I can totally get past the the older special effects and costuming, and you know, all that kind of stuff. That really doesn't bother me at all. But just the the acting in the original series. By some of the characters, <clears throat> William Shatner, <clears throat> and yeah, it's yeah. just so bad that it's like, ah, uh, I, I, it's sometimes I, hard to make it through, you know? Yeah, I think Galaxy Quest did a really good job of par- parodying a lot. Oh, of that. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I rewatched that right when the fellow who played Snape died, since he was also in Galaxy Alan Quest. Alan Rickman? Indeed. You know, I would argue that Alan Rickman why. is one of the greatest villain actors ever. See, I didn't even, like, get to Snape. I couldn't get through the stuff in the Dursleys. Like, I was like, this depiction of Middle Britain is, like, it's okay, but, eh, I, feel, I don't know. It just, Not it even didn't work. Snape, though. Like, Snape, uh, yeah, Snape is a, is a, is a bad, uh, is a, you know, decent bad guy. But then, like, you look at, like, Quigley Down Under or uh, just, it's just basically any movie that Alan Rickman plays a villain, you know it's going to be good. And I'm mm-hmm. going to die. Hold on. I'm getting shot at by a skeleton with an enchanted bow. Oh, you might want to take that from him and hope the enchantment is silk touch so you can use it to get an ender chest back. There. Ah, funny, funny. Oh, snap. Now, question, have you been on the, any of the Harry Potter rides at Universal? I've never no, even been to Universal. because, um, yeah, I've never, I went to Islands of Adventure, and I don't think they had a Harry Potter experience because it was 1998. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've never been either, but boy, those things look really cool. I've actually those never things. been to, like, a proper amusement park ever in my life. What kind of improper amusement parks have you visited? Like, like those like, sound way sounds better. amazing. You I know, like county this. fairs. I'm, oh, I thought you meant, like, oh, you know, my daddy used to get some planks uh, together and nail them to the wall, and then, you know, we'd hang some bungees from the planks. No, you know, like county fairs. Like, you can still ride, like, kind of, like, mini roller coasters and, like, go on, yeah. like you know, smaller scale rides at like your your local county fair, but you really can't like there there's no like super themed stuff or you know. Mm-hmm. My so. entire like life was we, we lived close to Disneyland I was going to Disneyland like once a year. Most some years not, but like quite a few times. And uh yeah, that was like most of my life was like planning my brothers and I planning that trip to Disneyland. That was like half of our life. <laughs> That seems pretty cool. Yeah, we we my parents weren't really into that stuff. Although I I, mo- I was living in Florida for a couple of years in middle school, and so like the uh, like eighth grade field trip or whatever was Islands of Adventure, and the seventh grade one was Sea World. And so I was like, oh, I get to go to these places, even though my parents would never take me. It's so cool. I have been to the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, Illinois. I don't know that that counts as a theme. Park. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. But it's cool. I mean, there's. Sea animals and fish. And well, no, like I'm just gonna mind. say I'm this: gonna we think you are cool, whether or not you went to a cool theme park. Don't try to yes. pretend that a place is not that is not a theme park is a cool theme park just so we respect you more. No, we will no, respect you less. It wasn't about we that. We respect like, you so much less. Well, you said Sea World, and it like popped into my head, and I was like, well, oh, that was SeaWorld a cool place a I went to. And then I was like, you know, that's really not. We were talking about amusement parks. Like my brain wasn't thinking the way it should have been. You know, I mean, eh, it is what it is. It's okay. We still we still respect you. I need a hug. The person hmm. who owns this giant thing that we're digging. This could Mr. be Ham. anyone. This could be this could be Ren the dog. This could be false the symmetry. It's, well, you know, with something on this scale, Queen. it's probably Biffa. Yeah, I mean Biffa yeah, loves. Definitely. Did you see Biffa's bowl on the first Hermitcraft? I did actually. I think I've visited it like three times. And I've never actually seen it finished. I probably should go back and watch an episode so yeah. I can find out what it looked like at the but, end. Uh, Hype, I got a record. But with with all this digging, this person who, who has this is probably going to be very upset with us about not making the edges that we've been digging out symmetrical and circular. I was Well, no, I was, I was, I was, I was leaving the sphere that. to him or her. I was just trying to get the chunks out of the middle. So this person can do the detail work while we do the grunt work. I, I mean, like you're thinking. I don't know. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm channeling Tim it. Allen. Oh, oh, oh. You know, grunt work. Let's go. I think I need to uh, head off and call it a night because I got a bunch of other stuff that I need to do, but it's been fun. All right, guys. I am back, and 
that was that was fun. That was fun. We hung out with Joe. We hung out with Scar. Uh, had some interesting conversation topics. <laughs> uh, as I said, a little bit of a different episode, as I said at the beginning of the video. But I thought you guys would enjoy seeing us just kind of hang out and be friends and all that kind of good stuff. But unfortunately, guys, I am out of time for this episode. So my friends, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I do appreciate it, and it really helps out my channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. There are links in the video description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll definitely see you next time.